Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of Hybrid Unlimited. Today, Marcus and I sit down, and as always, we talk about a wide range of topics. We talk about one of our favorite uh, Instagram business coach guru guys. We talk about um, a pretty hilarious, weird uh, Instagram account called Wise Words from Nev, I think it's called. Um, where she just makes the most wholesome dad joke content and the comment section is you're gonna have to check it out for yourself it is wild but we talk about that we read a few of the comments um we go over vince mcmahon and his uh duty problem that he's going through right now uh just oh the nfl being rigged and just the current state of the world and its craziness with the border conflict that's going on as well so some fun ones some heavier things pretty much everything in between uh, as always make sure you check us out at hybridstrengthcoach.com whether you're into bodybuilding powerlifting olympic weightlifting any sort of strength sport or you just want general fitness or athlete specific traditional athlete specific training We got everything uh, you could possibly want. So you can try seven days free of that just by clicking the seven day free option at checkout at hybridstrengthcoach.com. Other than that, sit back, relax, enjoy another episode of Hybrid Unlimited. I'm no genius businessman, but let me tell you something. If one of my people came to me with a problem and I just start berating them for being stupid because they caused the problem, which I now have to fix, Sorry, but the normal world just fires you. You will never, ever be in business. You can't just berate people. Like People paying you money are the only reason you're doing anything. I feel like dum-dums watch like Entourage, and they see Ari Gold, and they're just like, that's how you got to run it, tight ship. Just screaming at just, people and telling yeah. them they're morons? Well, dude, that's and that's also a paying customer. He made a video in response to that guy who was like, you know, so disrespected so i don't know if you saw another one it was a much longer video it was a guy who you know th- by his account he was already successful already making a lot of money then wes watson told him you know uh send me screenshots of your uh your revenues for the month mm-hmm. which i guess were for him 150,000. Uh, which which is great is insane actually because like the, that's a that's that's mo- that's more than that's like triple the average yearly income for most people. If you can make that much money in a month, congratulations, you've won the game of life. Well sure, done. but it his what he was saying is that's just how much money he was making. It wasn't because of what Wes Watson. Right. He's like the, he's like to his credit, what Wes did was, you know, he was going through a time where he wasn't being very healthy, and Wes kind of snapped him out of like doing drugs and partying and all this stuff that wasn't good for him he's like so i actually appreciate him for that but in terms of like the actual business coaching like he didn't deliver on the promise and then he just used my like screenshots of my revenue as a testimonial and his the whole point was he was supposed to send more people to my business but he just used it to be like look how great i am sign up for my thing and then um wes made a video about him oh because he also made comments about how he talked spoke to him inappropriately and wes basically made a thing being like if you're upset that I yelled at you or like, you know, said mean things to you, basically you're a pussy. And it's like, so if, so what you're saying is when someone who you pay money for advice treats you terribly and is rude for you, rude to you, there should, he should have no accountability. You should just say, thank you. Well, his, Where does whole, that his whole counter argument is, is that the way he speaks is motivational. And if you are tr- quote unquote triggered by it then that's exactly how you need to be spoken to which is crazy like the whole idea that you could run a business being an asshole to people it literally only exists in like i only know of the fitness world where people will take quote unquote tough love and turn it into a marketing mechanism because everywhere else on earth like you're not going to go, like, imagine you hired a nutrition coach. And you, you're, you're, like, telling your nutrition you coach. slob. It's like, you're a piece of shit. You know, the reason you're fat is because of you. And, like, inside, your dialogue's like, well, I mean, I kind of think that already. So I don't need you to remind me. Thank you, <laughs> yeah. guy. But like, 
Now imagine you apply that to the business world, like where your livelihood is supposedly coming from and the guy you're paying money to. First of all, let's back up to this whole fixation that people have with people on the internet that claim to be gurus. And I love that the guy that we both follow, Gino the Ghost, and there's so yeah. many of these pages, there's a lot of pages coming out now that are just calling out gurus. Mm. Because all of these guys are just like, yeah, I signed up for this guy's course. And there's a, there's a oh man, it's a great clip. There's this like comedian on, on Instagram. Let me show you real quick. And Caesar, Caesar is, is gonna put it up in the, uh, in the show if we can, but. This is, oh, pull up Malcolm, Malcolm Kellner, K-E-L, -K yeah, that guy, the second one down, he's just like a, a skit comedian, but he did a really, really good one, uh, it's probably, yeah, that one on the left, this one? yeah, oh, I saw this one, it's good, yeah, let's play, play it real quick, see if I like it. It's on the, uh, oh, sure. yeah. I think it was like 159K. 159,000, and when did you get the course? Yesterday. You got the course yesterday, guys. The course is available now. The link is in the bio. Did you see that? If you want to get my program, like you get rich today. No, no. All right, guys. Back had up, another up. amazing month Watch this month. Malcolm, tell us how much money you made this month. I, I, I think it was like 159K. 159,000, and when did you get the course? Yesterday. You got the course yesterday, guys. <laughs> the course is available now. The that's link essentially is in the, the bio. exact scenario we're talking about. Gun to his head. Oh, is he? Yeah, that's the whole story. Right, He's got a pistol right behind his head. Watch. Month this month. Malcolm, tell us how much money you made this month. I, I, I think it was like 159K. 159,000, and when did you get the course? Yesterday. You got the course yesterday, guys. The course is available now. The link is in the but bio. You know the, Click the it other if you want to get my that, program. That I didn't catch the gun the first time around. All right. Is that he? Uh, he had the. He said, "How much money did you make this month?" And then he said, "159k." And he said, "When did you get the course?" Yesterday. yesterday. So in the month he made 159k, but he had only got the course yesterday, yesterday, which is essentially what that Wes Watson scenario was. He's like, "I was already making this money," yeah. and then Wes was trying to, you know, promote it like it was his program or whatever. But yeah, I, like businesses, if you're if you go from zero to making a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month, either you've completely come out of left field with a product that's so innovative and so new to the market that you're gonna crush it forever and your revenue growth should 10x year over year. Or something's full of shit. Because yeah. most businesses don't just go from zero to a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month unless they're like an MLM or something crazy. Well, you also have to take into account, you could be really good at making revenue, but it also depends what your costs are, you know? Like yeah, scaling I, up and scaling up your costs a lot, like a lot of people do do that. But then if you're not making a ton of profit, you really have just bought yourself a job. But what's the whole thing that they're selling? The, the, the course that he's selling is basically you pay him and he teaches you how to become a coach that coaches, coaches other people. coaches to coach people to be other coaches this is this to, just a pyramid scheme it is that right that's isn't that the definition when you're not really selling a product other than like basically signing people up under you and you see it in the way they structure this i feel like we had talked about this recently or maybe it was me and valentina but um i feel like you have like your top level gurus right and some of those guys are legit like strategic coach like that's a pretty legit business one or, uh, or um Whoa. <laughs> Caught me off guard there. Uh, who's the Tony, Ro Tony Robbins? Yeah, some of those guys are legit, right? And I actually know some people who did Tony Robbins, uh, like sign up for the mentorship course. Uh, Geo um, from Barbell Brigade did it. And she said the, that thing was super cool. Like the content of it was cool. But also she said the, one of the most valuable parts about it was the level of person you're in the room with. She's like, you're literally in the room with like other celebrities and like that's who you're rubbing shoulders with and that networking is really valuable. But what I see is, so you get the guys who go to like the Tony Robbins course, right? Then a lot of those guys make courses and if Tony Robbins is like a hundred grand a year, then they're like, all right, the next level down is like 70 grand a year, then 50 grand a year <laughs> and then 40. And then eventually you just get to such like a low level of it that it just is a scam at that point. Well I think my I don't I guess there's a there's a place time and place for everything. There's coaching when it comes to like fitness stuff because like that is hard. It's hard to keep yourself accountable to that. Admittedly, nutrition, fitness, all of it. 
like it's pretty it's a pretty good idea to have an objective third party yeah i guess there's something to be said but you're also business coaching. But, you're, but you're well sure but it's like if you look at nutrition coaching you're coaching someone on how to do their nutrition if they want to become a nutrition coach after that they might need a business coach which is separate from being a nutrition coach right yeah. it's not a nutrition coach who coaches nutrition coaches to coach nutrition coaches how to be nutrition coaches <laughs> right like that's where it gets a little but when you say it like funky. that it sounds crazy because that's the truth right, <laughs> right. the truth of, the truth of this whole shtick is that you get you get the top mob boss and he's just creating little mob bosses that coach other mob bosses to be mob bosses to coach other people how to be mob bosses. and it's just down and down and down it's like who's actually doing any work no, nobody and it's, they're, it's, they're all just they're all basically <laughs> just repurposing the content from the course above with slightly less understanding than the person the rung above them too like the product gets so watered down i know but the, and like the the top guy the top moron at the, at the top of the food <laughs> chain is basically just a guy and I, I whoever's listening to this i hope you understand he lives in a house that's not his i i mm. saw the listing it's listed by dora puig the top realtor it's not his house drives a bunch of cars and like if you're the type of guy that can afford a fleet of four million dollars worth of cars you probably should have bought real estate if we're, I like, right. I don't think you could like sleep at night telling people how to run their business. If your net worth is tied up in depreciating assets, like that's not smart. Also, this is the same dude whose whole business model is selling the fact that he was in prison for 10 years. I can't imagine another industry on earth where you would pay a convict to teach you how to be successful because by definition you're already unsuccessful at being a criminal yeah. <laughs> and and all right all right let's take it a step further let's say you can overlook that his crimes were so stupid he was well, a guy who got caught for like home invasion and like marijuana offenses like if you're going to be a criminal, at least be a successful criminal. At least you were successful at one thing. <laughs> being successful at being incarcerated is like being the last guy in, like, I don't know, the D session of, of the American Open or, like, <laughs> the D session of the Olympics or something. Like, you're not getting on any Wheaties box for that, much less getting paid to teach people how to be the last guy in the D session. So, like... The fact that the, 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 that this guy is selling all this stuff and just keeps doubling down on it and like his whole thing is like he's just going to keep yelling at the camera mm -hmm. and rubbing shoulders like he just did an event down here with Jordan Belfort. I don't know if how is know. Jordan Belfort still convincing people to to get advice from him also failed criminal, but at least at least he made a lot of money doing it. But like but that's like saying, but dude, would, Wolf of Wall Street was so popular. Like, and the whole movie was basically, this guy's a shitbag. People idolize the fact that <laughs> like, he was a piece of shit. That would be like modern day idolizing Bernie Madoff. Exactly. Like, there's no sick Scorsese movie about Bernie Madoff. Because what they did in Wolf of Wall Street was take somebody who was a complete piece of shit, scammed people out of millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, got put away for it, turned him into a celebrity. Yeah. Because they made the movie really funny and sexy, and they cast Leo DiCaprio. Great choice, right? Right? Thank you. Caesar gave us the yeah. okay. And now, all of a sudden, we're supposed to go to those people for business advice? No. No, we're not. You know what you go to for business advice? You go to the boring old guy in the suit. Yeah. Who's, like, run a successful, like, I don't know, agriculture business or some shit. Making money the old-fashioned way, paying taxes the old-fashioned way. You don't go to the guy screaming into his... Like, you don't go to the guy on trend screaming into his cell phone in his Lamborghini. I'm but, sorry, but, but that ain't it. But most of those guys, they're not running mentorship groups. Like, they're doing their job, which is the well, that guy, the agricultural guy. <laughs> you know, he's running yeah. his business. And then when he, he doesn't have to do another thing to make money because the actual business is successful. And then he just one day retires. It's like, do you think Jamie Dimon has time to mentor people? Or <laughs> Ken Griffin has time to mentor people? Join Elon Musk's mentorship Yeah, group. do you think that guy has... <laughs> no, they're too busy making money with their business. The real way. The real way that you pay your bills. Like, I don't have time to mentor people. Hey, I'm going to mentor you how to be... Like, no, you don't have time to mentor people how to be in real estate because you're doing the thing. Right. I, I mean... 
Dude, I could go on forever. And the other thing, this is another. We're gonna, we'll move on from this topic in a, in a bit, but because yeah. <clears throat> there's, a, well, there's so actually there's a lot to talk about. We'll talk about it for however long we want. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> the the thing that's the craziest is he, the why people started calling him out initially wasn't even because of the phony business thing. It was because he was lying about the amount of time he did in jail and how oh, severe yeah. his imprisonment was. Like people have posted definitive proof uh like joey stacks uh who is like a guy who actually went to prison and it's like the the guys who are like that i also aside i went down a random like prison youtube uh rabbit hole Did there you? are a ton of guys who are ex-cons who talk about how prison was and guys they knew and where they're at and how things work but the ones that are like you know, I can see some value in are the ones who are not saying like, it's so cool that I went to prison and like lying about how long they've been in. Like these guys, like Joey, Joey Stacks is like a guy who's like, you know, not super polished, but he's like, yeah, th these are mistakes I made. You know, I, I learned the hard way, you know, if anybody's in that life, he's kind of like inspiration for people in that coming from that background that he did that was rough and he grew up in a rough area and ended up in a, some sort of crime thing and you know whatever but to to go to prison for seven and a half years and think i'm just gonna say 10 because more prison time is cool <laughs> like it's what like, dude going to jail is not cool you know what that sounds <laughs> like that's it's like insane that's like telling the world that you got indicted on 30 offenses when you really only got indicted on 20 it's like more doesn't eat this is the world where more doesn't equal better dude it, it no it's like it is it's also like being a child and like you had three beers, but you tell everyone you had 15 because you think that's yeah. cool. It's like, hey, man, no, you You're have a more problem. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like, like 15 beers is not don't like don't tell anyone that. Yeah. <laughs> Go get help. <laughs> but th again, like on the Internet, you can pretend to be whatever you want on the Internet. Right. You can tell people you, this is it's such a Wild West type type thing we're dealing with here because there's no verification. All you're doing is you're seeing a guy who somehow got a bunch of other people to record the same, like, and side note, if you watch the people that this guy has, like, go yelling their, at the camera. IG pages. And you look at, yeah, if you look at, all right, you go down their IG pages and you start to think, like, wait a second, would I trust that guy? No. No, I wouldn't trust that guy because just look at him. Look at him. All he's doing is yelling at the camera again. And it's just a bunch of guys yelling at the camera about successful. And another side note, if you watch this guy, because he goes to the same gym that I go to sometimes, but I don't go down there much anymore, but and I'm not going to call out the gym, but... <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> like, there was a video I saw today, and there was, there was a personal trainer. There was a personal trainer at this gym, which I won't name. <laughs> run by a guy I actually respect the shit out of because he's another real businessman like stand up dude great guy he's been on the show before and in the gym there was like a personal trainer training a client and he was just he, I think he was talking to his client there like saying man like uh, something about his commute time back and forth or something and Wes just starts talking shit to him while he was doing a workout so the guy whips out his phone and starts like talking shit back to him Films the whole thing, and the guy's like, and Wes's response was like, let me see your legs. Let me see the size of your legs or something. Something just, like, so silly that he was, like, trying to, like, I don't know, talk shit to him about. I don't Like, you're a less valuable person because your legs are small? Is that the idea? And it was idea? like, I'm like, okay, all right, Mr. I work out three times a day. And you, like, actually see, you can see this video if you go to Baller Busters. <laughs> you can see, like... You can see the interaction. But the funny part was, Wes, po Wes posts his, like, leg workouts, and you see him squatting. And it's like, dude, I would love to train with you one day and put you through that. that Yeah, not that one. It's how much. Look, he's working out in the fucking gym with sunglasses on, talking shit. How much weight? How much you weigh, baby? We know another guy who works out like that. Stretch, stretch your elbows. How much you weigh, baby? Stretch your like elbows, out, Wes. Come on. Come on, some glasses on? Let's go. Oh. <laughs> What's that? You want to see them? Yeah, Let me see your legs. Those are dope. Bro. Those first, bro. Check them out. What do you mean? You want to fight with me? How much you weigh? How much do I weigh? I weigh 205 pounds. Barely 200, yeah. 205 pounds.
I would just like this is the one time where I just wish I was that guy like he was talking <laughs> shit to just like dude there's a bigger fish you know and I would never do something like that because you know me like I'm I'm yeah nice and respectful in the gym setting but like to think that you're gonna flex on somebody while like you squat 315 pounds he's also only doing two plates on a t-bar row yeah like <laughs> like you're gonna flex on somebody because you weigh 240 pounds and you squat 315 like dude i'm 5'9 220 so that's not even that big i know and it's like <laughs> but like don't why are you bringing that stuff up like there's there's guys that i know that are 5'9 220 that can squat what 800 pounds like yeah. don't don't turn this into a pissing contest it just shows that this is just fuck this guy infinitely <laughs> fuck this guy infinitely and the fucking bullshit that he's putting out there because he's just a clown like i would love in some alternate world where i like could get this guy to train with me like all right let's go train you think you're a tough guy like i'll take you through one of my easy days and you see who's the real hot shot like you and your six workouts a day yeah they just do one good one like just <laughs> you could train three times a week just solidly yeah like probably let's just train four days a week and like maybe try to do like if you're like because if you look at the guy's physique like He's on a lot of drugs, and he ain't yeah. that strong. Like, so, can't you, I mean, I, I'm not going to hate on his physique. The guy's jacked. Like, I know, you know. but it just, it's just fucking trends pouring out of his ears. <laughs> it's got to be. Like, have you known anybody not on trend that talks like that? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, just all the time. All the time. Just yell, like... I know because when on, I took trend, that's like what that? I talked like. That's what I felt like. I felt like, like <laughs> I'm like I can see. That's that's a pretty reasonable way to behave when you have that stuff well, in your system. You might feel that way, but to present that way is still a whole other level. Oh well, like you know, you just try your best to hide it. You yeah. try your best, and you say, you know what? I know that deep down inside, right now, I am an angry, pissed <laughs> off, just oozing out of my eyeballs trend up guy <laughs> but i don't want the world to know that because it's not cool right i want to pretend to try my best and i'm going to just shove those feelings deep down inside and until I'm just it turns gonna... into cancer <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well trend can do that to you but i'm just saying like if that's the route you're gonna go just put that down in there you don't have to pre you don't have to present that to the world and like could you imagine being like his buddy? He, what? But he, there's no way he has friends. Could you imagine being his friend? That energy is. You imagine being around a guy who's just walking around like at all times. You never know. You're in the car with him, and he's just gonna put the fucking selfie cam on, just start yelling. Like, I wouldn't be your friend. Could you imagine just having a cigar with that guy and having sushi? Like sometimes we do that. <laughs> it would know, take it would take eight hours because he would never stop talking. Oh my god! <laughs> How could he smoke the cigar? <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> but like. <laughs> Can you imagine just chilling with this guy? No, there's no chilling happening. This is <laughs> he doesn't even sleep, have you heard? Well, that's, that's he, goes to, he goes to bed at 11 and wakes up at 2.45. That's probably why you're not successful. How many times have you worked out today, Hayden Bow? One, one. Well, how many Lamborghinis do you have? No Lamborghinis. Jesus Christ. No I mean, Lamborghinis. I'm doing this it guy, he's, he's fucking, you might as well. I might as well be hanging out with a homeless person here. I know, dude. I'm, fucking, I'm wearing an Apple watch. Like, what's wrong I mean, with what that? happened? Where, where's your Richard Mill? <laughs> Oh, wasn't he? Wasn't Baller Busters originally? Were they questioning? They posted a thing where they're questioning the authenticity of his Richard Mill. I would go. Do we go to the Baller Busters page where they catch him like coming out of somewhere and designs it district? And even the way he's just like, I'm Wes Watson. Everybody knows who I am. It's like that's nice. It's but it, like it's down farther. I think. Ah, there you go. White shirt. Yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah! Look at him! Look at that! He is the Excuse me, kind sir. Hey, I love that Richard Mill. 
Uh, I'm Ziv the watch guy. I, lo I love that Rolex as well. Is that the presidential? Can you guys share with our viewers what you do for a living? What do you do for a living? I'm Wes Watson. Everybody oh, knows who I am. Oh, oh, what, what's your name? Wes Watson. Wes Watson? Okay, awesome. Sure, sure. <laughs> and what advice do you have for Hold people on. just starting pause. out? Can we pause? <laughs> He's got a man purse. He's got a man purse. He's got a white leather man purse. Miami has turned into a place where people can walk around like this. Even that guy. You see that fucking guy? Billy New, Billy McFarlane? Oh, Remember the fire here? Festival guy? He's guess doing where, another fire Festival. Guess where they're hosting it? The same place? Here! Oh, God. Please, no. Please, no. Oh, yeah. Fire 2. Dude, the confidence that those guys spew bullshit is just unbelievable. <laughs> did, did he go to jail? Yes! And now he's out and he's like, you know what I should do? Wire fraud. The same thing again. He's just going to... That put me in jail. Doing the thing. All right, go ahead. We can finish. <laughs> oh, that that's it. stunning. The rose gold print. Oh, that teardrop. <laughs> Man, you're one lucky girl. Oh, uh, can you guys share... Uh, what, what's the best advice you could give people just starting out? Want to become actually. successful like Personal you? development, first and foremost. Okay. Develop you as your best version of yourself, first and foremost. Didn't uh -huh. say anything. And then so learn from a top that. entrepreneur on what you want to sell. I love it. And how about you? What advice do you have for people just starting out? Just to stay connected with the highest truth. Also oh, what does that, that mean? Thank also you guys so much the highest sharing. truth? Is God bless you, sir. Excuse me? It's just... ambiguous. <laughs> it's provocative. It, it gets the, the people it gets going. The people going. <clears throat> this like, I go there all the time. I mean, mainly just to get ice cream at this point, because I fucking... To design? Sh to kith treats? It's so good. Have you been? I have. It is so good. It is so unbelievable. It is the best ice cream in town right and now. And they're actually, I like the simplicity of it too. Like they're not trying to do too much. It's right, just, right. just like here, we're going to just throw a shitload of ice cream in a blender. And they have the whole place is decked out in marble. And it's like yeah. eight bucks. And you get an amazing ice cream. Yeah, it's the cheapest thing in the design district. Oh, for by sure. a country mile. I mean, dude, even a coffee in the design district costs six bucks. Dude, it's a bizarro world in there. Six bucks? Are you kidding? They're like fourteen ninety nine. You're like, for one? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, totally reasonable. Dude, uh, it's like the airport. I went with Nate the other day because there we just wanted he wanted to go walk around and look at watches and stuff. So we walked in and I've always been showing him that Alange and Son, mm. like this cool. If you guys yeah, don't yeah. know, it's like probably the my favorite watch brand on the planet. So we walk in and like they have a ton of stuff that you can buy there. My dream watch is this thing called a Zeitwerk. It's like this crazy mechanical but also digital display like it's got not digital but it shows just like 832 the numbers and it, mm -hmm. it's got this crazy crazy move and they had it it's like 132 grand wow. sat us down let us touch everything and he's like you guys want to see something really cool and they whip out like the granddaddy watch the probably the coolest thing they've ever had this thing called a richard lounge it was like quarter million dollar watch and they just took off the labels let us play with it let's put it on and i was just like holy shit like there's no joking around in that place. It's cool when you go in and people are excited about like what they oh, do. And, and they were pumped. And there was like, yeah. there was a guy, it was like a Middle Eastern guy that walked in right after me. And he's like, oh, do you guys have the Zeit work? And we were just like, good luck. We're going to leave. <laughs> I hope you sell that watch. <laughs> yeah. But it's sick because like you walk around, there's just, you never know who you're going to see. But it's usually the people that don't look wealthy. That are the wealthiest, yeah. This usually. is always my thing. Like, of all the people I've ever met, the wealthiest people I've ever met in my life never look like they're the wealthy ones. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you see guys just Unless flexing. You're, except for Asian dudes, they ball out. But, like, subtly. Subtly. Right. Classy. I did see a guy that I thought looked homeless because he was just wearing, like, ra like kind of raggy, ratty-looking clothing. And his shoes were all, like, scuffed up, and, uh, you know, I was like, oh, man. And then I, I looked closer at them, and I'm like, oh, those are Gucci shoes. And then I looked them up, and they're obviously, like, way expensive. I'm like, oh, this guy's just got way better style than me. Yeah. So much so that I didn't realize. Like that. It's, uh, it's a wild world. <clears throat> I mean... The design district is cool. It's a great people-watching place. Oh, uh, the best. Also, it's basically a car show 24-7. Yeah, Wild and they cars. have the, the car. They actually have the car event coming up. Oh, of course. Do they? The, the retro one or the like supercar yeah, one? I think the supercar one. That's pretty fun Which to just walk like through. Wild. They bring the crazy stuff out. It's, uh, it's a nutty place to be. But Miami's turning into much more of a nutty place than it used to be. And you've <laughs> Which is saying a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, how much has it changed since you got here? Dude, when I got here, Wynwood was the hood. I used oh, to yeah. come down here and you had to like watch yourself. Oh yeah. Now there's 
tour buses coming through, parties everywhere. It's like the most expensive real estate in Miami. Yeah, <laughs> which is hilarious because I just somebody sent me a thing trying. We'll talk, but like the prices here have just oh gone oh like crazy. Yeah, I'll tell you about it after. Right. But like just absolutely bonkers, bonkers like triple. Like I remember the first gym. This place that I just saw today that somebody was trying to shop, it's like triple the price. Of uh, what Hybrid One was? Yeah. Well, even here, we've been here how long? Five years? Six now. Six, Over, coming yeah. up on six. And uh, yeah, our rent has doubled at this building since we've since we've been here. Yeah, and somebody showed me a space today that's like half the square footage and the same price they're trying to renew you at. Wow. Right around the corner. Like wow. on Northwest 5th. Wow. Crazy. The vultures have descended. The city is going to be a, uh, a rich man's playground sooner rather than later. Yeah, I mean, it's always kind of been that. Just the, the like, area where it is that has just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. I know. it's And from both sides. It's just, like, gentrifying and pushing out all these other areas. Like, dude, soon, uh, like, Little Haiti will be unaffordable. It already is. Do you is know, it? like, a lot of houses in there, like, I... Before you would never think about a million dollar house in Little Haiti, and no. there's they're building houses in there that cost a million bucks. You still be able to smell that area from here. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I'm here to tell you, you still can. Like, like I have to if I walk from my house to the Citadel. Up, oh, buddy. Up, oh, Jesus. Up, oh, off. Oh boy, we might have to pause for a second. Uh oh, uh oh, poor guy. We got a dog puke situation here. We'll be right back. All right, we're back from the dog puke uh, situation. As you guys know, Tim is a, a valued member of this show, and he just threw up a little bit. He hasn't been on that much lately. I know. I just haven't been bringing him. Well, welcome back, Tim. Yeah, he, nice, he was just nice too to excited. Him. Yeah, that must have been it. He hasn't been on camera in a while. The nerves got yeah. to him. <laughs> Look uh, at this comment. It says, ha ha, so funny. Cast <laughs> oh my god. Uh, wait, where were we before we... <laughs> we just ran ranting about dog. people that are scammers. Con yeah. artists, such. yeah. Well, whatever. I think we made our point there. Um, but don't let's not beat a stuff. dead horse. Yeah, it is fun. To talk also, about, if though. you guys feel so inclined, you have a free pass from us, your amazing, gregarious hosts of Hybrid Unlimited, to hate <laughs> indiscriminately on Wes Watson oh, because God. he is. You know, if anybody deserves these comments. From the sweet young woman we're about to speak of next, it's him. <laughs> Imagine if that became a trend on his page. <laughs> All right, so let's preface this because I don't know what we caught uh, in the recording. So there's this, there's an Instagram. We got everything. Okay, well I'll oh, recap. God. Wise words from Neve or Neb. I don't know how you pronounce it. Wholesome girl, just basically does like dad jokes in an. It, I, I'm guessing it's an intentionally corny way, and I imagine that at some point. Somebody just said a heinous comment, and then a thread started of heinous comments, just like piggybacking off of it, and it has then spiraled into this, where every post is just completely unhinged in the comment section. And well, look at this engagement. Every one of these comments, dude, this girl, has like this girl got of likes. like famous just from people being disgusting <laughs> in her in her comment section. But at least they're not being disgusting like toward her. Like, not making fun of her, they're just, like, I, I don't know what you... Could you imagine being, like, a 17 or 18-year-old girl, and you're just going through this, and, like, let's read some more <laughs> of these. Like, well, there's no reason. It's just it's totally unprovoked. Great job. Infect this chinchilla with AIDS and mail it to me. And mail it to me. Hilarious. <laughs> Slap my, slam my tip in the dishwasher door. <laughs> Oh, like what, dude? This is crazy. This is this is so unhinged. Like see another one. My trainer asked oh. me what kind of squat I'm accustomed to doing. I said diddly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so in this guy, there's a guy on, that on every single one of her posts, he just he prompts AI to write some long paragraph. And there was a few where he like wasn't showing up, and they were like. Where's AI, or where's Paragraph Guy? <laughs> and he's like famous in her comment section now. All right, let's keep. Oh, his name is literally just the comments guy. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, look, that guy just said, have a nice day, which is my chest is ready. <laughs> Shit, my cereal. <laughs> oh, my God. Funny joke, change my, my oil. What does that mean? Is that a thing? 
change? I think what does that's, that mean? Isn't that an oil change when you try right. to beat a drug test? Google it. It's oh, well, oh, it's when you remove your urine and then oh, I know about that. Like through a what's it called? Um, like a catheter. A like catheter, a, the, yeah. You stick and it up your pee put, hole like, clean and you just urine in. Oil change. Oh my god. Okay, the, the official definition <laughs> on Urban oh Dictionary: god. If you use drugs and need to pass a, I think that means piss test. Uh, a PVAC isn't an option and you need clean urine, you'll need to do an oil change. An oil change is when you stick a sterile tube oh in your urethra until urine naturally comes out. Well, I don't know if natural is the right word. Uh, t next, take a syringe full of clean urine and inject it into the tube. There, your oil changed. God damn. What the fuck? Yeah. Know somebody who did that. We do know somebody who. who it's not did even that. sexual anymore. You just want to be murdered. <laughs> what the Shit fuck is happening in these comments? <laughs> <laughs> Shit on my bicep. <laughs> oh my god. You know what's funny about the internet is it's it's a magical place, right? That just lets people be themselves. This is a lot of people's themselves, and it's <laughs> troubling. <laughs> oh, this guy. Oh, this one starts off sweet. Let's see where this one goes. Ignore the comments. You seem so sweet. Matter of fact, shit <laughs> on my chest. Dude. That can't be a thing. Do you think people actually enjoyed having their chest shit upon? Not according to that re the recent lawsuit against uh, Vince, oh, McMahon. Vince McMahon. Oh, that's an interesting Look, segue. And I'm not. I'm not going to victim blame here, but it's. I've never tried this, but I would imagine. <laughs> It's difficult to defecate on someone's head, right? Like without like, some sort of because like <laughs> there's a build up period to that. Surely it, it was apparently in a threesome with with him and there was two women and Vince McMahon dutied on her, and um, <laughs> that she's being sued for that now. So that's why that's why he stepped down from WWE and. Do you think the that there's is. a world in which you're in a threesome? And that doesn't happen without some sort of like preface, like in the beginning, like all right, guys, you got to know it's coming. There's no there's here's no a couple surprise. things we're gonna try here. You know, <laughs> it's gonna be a threesome. It's kind of a lot of banging. It's kind of maybe a, team a thumb job, isn't it? <laughs> maybe a little shitting on your head. Are we cool with that? It's like, what amount of money do you think it would take for the girl to say, "All right, fair." I don't know. There's some. And how many? Checks. How many? Zeros? Apparently, you know where this apparently happens a lot. No, to, I don't actually. To uh, Igram or the Instagram models that get flown out to like Dubai and Saudi. That's gotta be. <clears throat> there's no like. No way. No, apparently it's like they're into that. Who is into that? Not, not the the girls can't the, be like it's like a humiliation fetish type thing. But like this guy like looks like it. Wario. <laughs> oh yeah, he really does. You're telling me that somebody was willing. I don't care how much money that guy's willing to pay. You're you're telling me that well, Wario he got, he got way shit on somebody's head. <laughs> he got way stranger looking. He wasn't. <laughs> oh god. No, he's kind of more of a Waluigi. Waluigi. He's kind of more Waluigi. Waluigi. You're right. Yes, Waluigi. I was right. I was on the right track. Yeah. Okay. You're telling me that Waluigi was given the green light to take a dump on a girl's like. Wow. You know what? I know very little about oh sex, God. but what I do know <laughs> is, that, is that feces plays no part in it. willingly for most. I, okay, but like if you're in, you're telling me that this guy has just gone through life banging, 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 exerting his power allegedly, and reached that point where he's like, you know what? The only thing that's gonna do it for me, shitting on your head. You know what would be the ultimate, um, and again, not victim blaming here, but imagine if you ha it was the girl's idea to get him to do that so that she could sue him because no one's going to believe you wanted that. She could just be playing chess. Oh, it's while, possible. While we're all playing checkers But here. like, no matter what, the allegations don't sound good in Waluigi's favor. No, but uh, to your comment about his looks, he didn't look terrible before. No. He actually just looks like a different person. You know what the problem is when really wealthy guys that really care about their public image start to get older and Type they don't embrace young. it? When they don't embrace it, they start to look like this. Yeah, you know who had a weird sort of uh, transformation? Yeah, look, he was like jacked. Yeah, he was. Like probably up into his like 
fifties and sixties, and now he's like older. Like, look, he's a decent looking dude there. Right, sure, but like you gotta embrace looking old. There's there's been a few celebrities who have done the plastic surgery route and just um, completely just look bizarre now. But um, one who you wouldn't expect because they they're such a like a shit disturber person who you'd think would make fun of that. Oh, these guys, the French yeah. ones. I know you're talking um, about here. Yeah. Oh, those guys are weird. You know looking. what's weirder though? Who yeah, is the it? Bogdanovs. I've read, I've seen these guys oh, on the internet. They also claim that they didn't have plastic surgery. These guys? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, man. That guy looks like the go. The second image there. That yeah, the guy on the right looks like the clown guy from Saw. Oh yeah. He looks like the mask <laughs> yeah, from the clown right. dude in wow. Saw. Oh, like that's honestly terrifying oh, to see. And I wouldn't want to be around them in I person. S- I saw one of these types of people in real life the other day. It's freaky. <clears throat> and I, oh, I did, wasn't able to see myself, but uh, I spoke to them, and um, I hope my face wasn't just like reacting. You know what I mean? I hope that I How had a poker not, face though? on. How do you just not like react? A, oh, just, you know, ooh, you know who else? Makes uh, you feel weird. Mickey, for the rest of the day. Was it Mickey Rourke, the guy he who played the wrestler? Weird stuff, yeah. But yeah. dude, the one I was talking about was Seth MacFarlane. He's gone weird. Look, go look Are him. You talking up. about the late night host, Seth MacFarlane? No, uh, the Family Guy. Uh, him creator. He doesn't look bad. Yeah, these are pretty flattering photos of him. But he he got really smooth. And like, where's a good one? That, maybe do a before and after. Here's the thing, though. When you're in Hollywood like that, I got to imagine that it just becomes a bizarro world because you're constantly being forced into like these weird TV interviews on the internet. And like your looks are look so crazy. important to the internet. But I think and more to so to you, dude. Like nobody, yeah, yeah. like nobody was like, yeah. Dude, you know who really fell off and looks old? Clint Eastwood. Like, he just got old, and that's fine. Right? It's when you be, like, I can't remember who said this, but they were basically yeah, like... He looks like a grumpy oh. old man. That's what he is. He's a grumpy old man who's, like, in his 80s or 90s. But, like, I, it, it it's freaky. Because, like, I think humans are just by default. We, we're, our biology picks out. Like, when we see somebody, you pick out something that looks abnormal... It's like it's not like you're being judgmental, but it's like our brain is just wired to pick out things that are abnormal. It's probably just like a hereditary or a evolutionary thing, right? So when you see yeah. an old person that's like not really keeping up with their age due to whatever, like when you see women especially that get those crazy like pulled back facelifts. Oh dude. Uh, you ruin your day or not? Yeah. I guess we're on that track anyway. <laughs> uh, While you're pulling it up, um, Oh. oh man, I lost uh, I lost my train of thought. We'll uh, go to this. Is this guy just do the full face stretch thing? Yeah. Oh, and he's like proud of his work. He's like showing this off like it was a good job kind of thing. Yeah, it's but it's shocking. Oh, well, then don't ruin my day, man. <laughs> you guys oh, oh, this is what I was gonna say. Bill Burr said it in one of his stand ups. He's like, you know. He's ripping on the whole plastic surgery thing, and he's like, you know, women, they'll be in their early 40s or late 30s, and they go and they get plastic surgery way premature, and they're like, do I look 20 now? And it's like, no, like, you just, it's ah, weird. I yeah, haven't don't, seen, I've oh. seen it. Don't, don't do it. Yeah, I, I hate see, this. Oh, this I is gross. Real, yeah, I saw a reel about this the other day. It's gross. I hate it. Don't do it. <laughs> he's like, he, he's like, he, either you're 38 years old. There's nothing wrong with 38 years old. You get that done, like, you don't look 20. You just look like a 38-year-old lizard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, is is he Jewish? Bill Burr? I don't think so. Ah man, I think he he's, is he's, one. No, he's he's Irish Catholic. He is one step away from a Larry David. I know his social comment his com- comedy is the fucking best. He's been taking some uh, some shots lately though because yeah. of his wife flipping off Trump at the UFC event. You hear about that? Oh yeah, I saw it. But like. I love the way he played it off. He's just like, what do you want me to do? You know, she's her own person. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. not going to get upset about that. She doesn't like the guy. He does handle that kind of thing well. Oh, just Because that could have turned into him. a huge controversy, but because he didn't take it serious. No. No one did. The Why same thing with, with Dana White. Dana White has done an awesome job at, like, just never showing a, a crack in his armor where he's like, the free speech thing. People are always getting on his case. There's different uh, athletic boards who have said they might step in. And he's always just been like, absolutely not. We don't control what people say. People can think and say whatever they believe. 
you know? Even when he's got some wild characters fighting under the promotion. Hey, he's, but he's like, he's his stance is like, this is ridiculous. These guys are going to get in their underwear and try to kill each other in a cage, but they're not allowed to say mean things to each other. <laughs> like, just think about what you're, this is the sport. what you're talking about. At least it's, you know, it, oh man, I got another, we got, I got another place we could take this in a second, talking about. I'm excited. Pe- yeah. Uh. These people are, are they're gladiators, right? Like, first of all, you can't really expect them to be all there mentally because what they do is try to kill each other. Right. Like, gotta be I'm not a... saying CTE is good, but I'm saying it's an eventuality of the sport. Right. It's very likely it could happen. So, like, maybe they're just going to have a screw loose and they're going to say things that some people think. Oh, you remind me of something great, too. Interesting. Well. But where I'm going with this is today, I was just talking to this about Jose. Shout out, Jose. If you guys are looking for a barber in Miami, Winwood Hair Company, Jose's the homie. I'm actually some... leaving here to go there. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah. All right, well, you're going to want to talk to him about this when you get in there, because he's going to get all riled up. I saw him this morning. <laughs> There's this conspiracy that is now making its way around the internet, which apparently everybody in the shop knew about when I brought it up this morning, was that somehow the Chiefs going to the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, this is a big one. This is the the Taylor Swifter Bowl, is what they're Mm -hmm. calling it on the internet. But they're saying, I don't know who is saying it, but there's like, I've seen it enough. Like, Mm -hmm. mainstream news outlets are carrying this story. That somehow, them going to the playoffs is potentially a setup for her to endorse Biden. Mm -hmm. And then, somehow, the NFL has somehow had a hand in this, controlling... The global elites. Controlling the Chiefs getting to the playoffs because Taylor Swift is trade dating Travis Kelsey to, to go out hats. and endorse Biden and somehow influence the election. Yeah, well, thoughts. So they they pull, so there's been a long running thing where um, have you ever heard anybody talk about the NFL script? Mm-mm. This has been going on for years. And what why people it started with the fact that most sports uh, leagues are registered as that. Right, like their business is registered as a uh, as a sports league, whereas um, the NFL is registered as an entertainment company, which is the same thing as the what the WWE is registered as. And then people started pulling this thing up, or started noticing that weird things were happening, in like just fluke things that make no sense that coincidentally aligned with enormous payout odds in Vegas. So, for example, what, uh, just type from, I can't remember what game it was, but say, uh, type, um, guy intentionally doesn't tackle Mahomes. It doesn't tackle Mahomes. Like, this determined the outcome of the game. And, yeah, watch that. Instead of tackling him, he, for some reason, at the last second, decides to uh, continue as guest, I guess. Watch this. Okay. Yeah, watch when this replays. Isn't that their quarterback? Yeah. He, he rushed, and he... Look at this. So he's like, oh, shit, shit, shit. Rushes. This one, this one right here. Look. Why did you tackle the guy right there? Right, so bad angle. That, but there are there are ang- no there are angles where it's that's the most charitable angle. There okay. are angles where it's insane, where you're just like that makes no sense. Like here, Here's another one. Like he just flies by over here. <laughs> <laughs> like this one is crazy when you see it because he was making he was running towards Mahomes in the uh, a more zoomed out uh, uh, view, and then he just all of a sudden goes whoop and hits the other guy. Um, but they're saying that there's a script because of this and the that whole there's NFL though. Well, I'm not saying I agree with it, but there are incredible, you know, it'll things like if there's a spread that needs to be covered and it's huge odds. And then all of a sudden somebody flubs a field goal from like, you know, super close or like just, just, is this the, you know that the same play? You know that there's betting odds on whether or not he's going to propose I know. Taylor Swift I saw that at the end of the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well. Okay. So here's here's what they're saying. Also, they just did uh, recent polling, and 17 percent of Americans 
said that they would vote the way Taylor Swift votes. Okay, that is how, like is how that, is that any different than voting the same way that the, like a like a CNN or a Fox News anchor would vote? Well, just voting for, because someone else is doing something, voting a certain way is insane. You know, like obviously think for yourself and what matters well, to sure, you. But like, but Taylor Swift, that's insane. That's like what's Slash from Guns N' Roses? Well, that's like political listening opinion. to that guy, Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy. Like, why are we going to listen to him? Oh, that guy's deposition is hilarious. Yeah. Also, he's going completely broke. Oh, uh, that's upsetting because I, I really enjoyed him getting upset in his deposition. Um, but yeah, so that's the conspiracy is that there's a script and now the script is Taylor Swift bringing 17% of potentially young people who otherwise wouldn't vote to the, uh, to the table to vote Democrat, which is, do I think that that's the case? No. Do I think that the, that definitely the NFL wanted the chiefs to go to the Super Bowl? Yes. Did that maybe influence the way the the refs ref that game? Maybe. You know? Scooter Braun. And oh, and also the other thing was, um, what's his name? George Soros was behind the purchase of uh all of Taylor Swift's it was, it was this guy. No, but it was it was funded by uh George Soros. So George love, Soros owns the rights to all of Taylor Swift's. But uh, is he just an investor in this guy's uh, music thing? I'm not sure the backstory on it, but it is, it is like there's a lot of weird coincidences. I'll give you that at the very least. Like I can see why the tinfoil hat guys are going nuts with it. Um, but yeah, it's it, you know. I gotta tell you, a little side note here. Great music, Taylor Swift. Great music. I mean, she's not my style, no, but I but can, like, she's she's where she's at for a reason. Yeah, she speaks you know? to the people. Yeah, I listen. There's a there's something to be said about money being involved in anything, especially a massive amount of money. Oh. And the NFL is like the biggest business there is. The uh, the other to thing. think that there's no influence speaks to a level of ignorance, which I think sure. you can't look past. But also like. Don't you think? Because there's individual owners, and those individual owners collectively are like right. billionaires multiple times over. If you own an NFL team, like you're one of the richest people on earth. Right. You're of that club of like those 200 dudes who just own mm -hmm. everything already. But it, I just think it would be kind of hard to imagine that there's a scenario where like there's a guy pulling the strings behind the door really controlling it to some really like significant degree unless all of these guys are colluding. To like, as team owners, like, all right, we know who's gonna win. I'm like, well, we're cool with that. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, the script is a little far fetched, obviously, but the, but the influence thing, like you said, could it influence the way they tell, like, um, the higher ups in the NFL t tell the refs to ref? You know, like they. But don't you think somebody would talk about it? Like, there would have to be one guy. The other thing that they're saying why the Taylor Swift. Uh, Travis Kelce thing was um, a setup is because coincidentally Travis Kelsey or Kels, I can't remember how to say it is uh, he's got all these super left wing sponsorships like he and his family were like Mr. Pfizer they were the guys in all the Pfizer commercials yeah, they have a the whole family has a, a PR agency working for them and they're all getting these crazy like left wing sponsorships so they were like this is weird that Taylor Swift is like being set up to endorse Biden and he's Mr. You know, this is a funny thing about that though. People like how it's far fetched to think that the Pfizer is suddenly some like left wing thing when they were universally hated by people that were liberal and conservative far before this whole COVID thing, because they were just an insanely profitable, uh, Big pharma, big company. pharma company. Like you know, it, it like they're not left or right. Well, pharma, uh, Pfizer is just a uh, money making machine. The big, the big conspiracy that people all lend this to is basically that there's a few organizations like BlackRock and whatever who all own these companies, and that's part of the whole agenda that they're you know trying to dumb down and pacify and make uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for. 
just pacify. make pa- pacify, but like make just make a less resistant general public who's willing to like bend to these to whatever you know what happens. But there, like I, I've heard that it's like the, there's a, there's a couple of those right. Like BlackRock mm-hmm. owns everything, and Blackstone and BlackRock and a couple of these other companies own all this stuff. Um, own all of these companies and all this. Now they're talking about them buying real estate, but. What a lot of people don't realize is all these companies are just gigantic asset managers. So mm-hmm. like pension funds, you know, small investment funds, like they all, everybody has some, probably some stake tied up in these big companies. And all they do is manage other people's money. They raise funds for real estate from investors. Mm-hmm. They raise funds from corporations, blah, 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 blah. And they just do stuff and manage assets. So like. Saying that they own it isn't really accurate either. And I think that the there's this huge thing online saying that Blackstone, BlackRock, all these big asset managers own all this real estate. Like, the number's actually not that big. No? No. It's not that big. Like pe- Again, this especially because, like, my world's real estate. I understand that very well. But one of the things that people fail to realize about that space is, like, real estate... There's a, there's a lot of these real estate investment trusts and there's a lot of these real estate funds that all people do is they contribute amounts of money on their own. They spread the risk out right. and like these bigger companies, they'll buy up assets like office buildings and apartment complexes and stuff like people are willing to vilify Blackstone and BlackRock, but they're not vilifying guys like Grant Cardone who do the same exact thing. I would bet you that if you invested in a BlackRock real estate fund, that you probably get a better return than like a Grant Cardone real estate fund. Yeah, and it's probably better managed, but he just might not not have the influence though com- comparatively, which is why people might not hate him. And again, I'm not like, I'm not saying, I don't I don't know enough about any of that to intelligently formulate a, you know, an opinion on it. So I'm I would never. But this is this is the one that espouse that as something that I sure. that is a truth. Like I don't know. But the truth is, these are all a bunch of big corporations. And if you th- this this country is being divided up into this left versus right ideology, but the people that actually make the laws in this country are senators. Our country mm-hmm. is run by the, the is run by our Congress, made up of the House, made up of the Senate. Right. So you got right. 435 people in our House. You have a hundred senators. They're all taking money from these gigantic corporations, left and right. They donate both ways. They're ambivalent. All they want. They, you know, people use this grand they like they're tough. Yeah, the tinfoil hat people. They, those global elite, they're <laughs> they're coming to make the frogs gay. <laughs> but what this is is it's we're in like this corporatocracy where every major corporation. Sir, you have guys like uh, Soros and who who are the big donors on the right? The Koch brothers, like they mm-hmm. have their own agendas because they've got family offices. They've got their own money. But for the most part, all these other political parties. All these other politicians, left or right, they're being they're being given money by corporations. By and large, you know, maybe it's not exactly equal, but like they want to hedge their bets because they want their agenda passed. So the stuff that makes the news is a lot of social issues, the hot button stuff, the the economy, which goddamn nobody understands anything about right. economics is the fucking stupidest conversation. <laughs> People want to blame. Uh, Biden for inflation like everybody voted on these restrictions back in 2019 or 2020 and Mm -hmm. 2021 they both voted to print money where did that seven trillion dollars come from go look at the bills both parties voted for it Trump voted for it Biden voted for it inflation is not like a a, oh the guy he he like another thing they love to talk about in the news left and right it's like gas prices do you think for a second that the president of the United States is just like has a little dial on his desk to determine like gas the Homer prices? Simpson, the win lose button in the casino? Let's crank up the gas. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's not how it works. It's literally just traded on the public markets. Mm-hmm. If something happens in the Middle East or some big oil producing country, then we're going to have issues as a result. They do of it. restrict, restrict it to change the prices of it though like one barrel of oil will fall off a but ship it's not the president in the middle of the ocean and then all of a sudden gas it's like goes up OPEC. a dollar we don't yeah. have control over opec unless we're just constantly pointing missiles at their heads but they're our allies we can't do that so th- the people just if you hear somebody and say and they're telling you they 
Mm-hmm. They they want to control us and they want to buy all the houses. So you can't. It's like it's not how it works. Right. Big corporations donate to Congress people, left, right, center. <clears throat> you know, gay, straight, black, white, Jew, Christian doesn't matter because they're only concerned with their own profitability. So yeah. the best way to deal with that. It's by donating to lobbyists, donating to Congress people, and actually happened. This was a Supreme Court decision that happened under Bush, mm-hmm. where it was uh, people. It's called People's United, where the, where the Supreme Court recognized that they are allowed to, or I guess the government sees corporations as people in some capacity, right, where right. basically allows them to donate unlimited funds to these political action committees and, and centers, and like they're allowed to stay there forever. They're allowed to take as much money as they want. Like, you know, Trump's been fighting all these lawsuits based on political donations for the last several years since mm-hmm. he left office. Like, all that money that people donate to him for his presidency is, like, going toward fighting his legal bills. Not right. all of it, but, like, you know, whatever, a majority of it. This left versus right thing has to has to stop at some point, but people yeah. have to get smart enough to realize that both sides of the aisle are taking money from the same people. Yeah, well, and they're also both corrupt. But I think the thing that's that at least that concerns me as a person in this country is if either side gets too much power or leverage over the other. When there's that, like, the t- I don't like the two party system to begin with, but just, you know, if there's too much power on the Republican side and things get too far right, that's scary for its own reasons. And same with on the, the the Democrat side, right? But for me, right now, what is slightly concerning is I feel like the the Democrats, if they're successful in a few things, are going to create such a power imbalance that we could see them in power forever. Like they're and when we were going to talk about the border issue uh, anyway. But right, you know, originally they had estimated that there were 11 million illegal immigrants in the United States. New stats have come out saying that it's double that. So 22 million illegal immigrants in the country, it's right? crazy. 80% of whom will vote for the first time, first time uh, immigrants, 80% of the time or something around that number, vote Democrat, right? But they have to be citizens to vote. <clears throat> But right now, they're pushing to make all of those illegal immigrants citizens with voting rights. So if they're successful in that, and that's a huge if, that's 17, or sorry, 22 million new Democratic votes, which is insane. The largest Hmm. discrepancy in votes we've had between parties in the history of the United States is like 17 million. So you're effectively wiping out that and then some in a way that could have one party in power indefinitely. I would have which to is ask pretty wild. My, my immigration legal consultant on this one. Yeah. I don't know what the, the logistics are. If that's true, it's insane. But the fact is, no president has really figured out how to solve this border crisis. This has been going on for years under Democrats, under mm-hmm. Republicans. Nobody's solved the problem. I mean, the bigger problem... Obviously, that's a huge problem. Like, if there's that many illegal immigrants coming into the country, we're, like, one of the only places on Earth except for, like, I don't know, it, probably the Turkish border where Syrians, Syrian refugees are fleeing into the into their country and, like, other places that are undergoing, like, genocide or war and mass ex- exodus of people. But nobody's figured it out. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we had we had Bush in office for eight years. He didn't fix it. You know, we had Obama in office for eight years, didn't fix it. We had Trump in office for four years, didn't fix it. It's like, what's the real answer here? You know, like, they're going to point the, the finger at the president. Like, why isn't Congress doing anything? Yeah. Why isn't somebody taking some money from our defense budget and saying, all right, we're going to go create a border that's actually secure? It seems like that would be a very good use of money, don't you think? Of course. But I think that's what the big issue is right now is the fact, like... There was a choice made to just let, to make that border open. For it's been like that forever. No but, one person but, or Congress has taken it upon themselves to say, we're going to solve the problem. Right. A lot of people have said they're going to solve the problem and not. But it's... Well, because it's a big fucking... I mean, dude, but, to, but to be on the side of 
not attempting to, or not well, even saying you'd yeah, like to is stupid. pretty crazy. Can you pull up a statistic, see what the length of the U.S.-Mexico border is? And uh, But uh, you know what I want to know is why is it so hard to build a wall? Well, because it's super expensive. It, Ch but China did it with, like, just a bunch of dudes and yaks and stuff, <laughs> you know? Sick wall. Still there, by the way. I, I went, know. I went it's a it. phenomenal wall. Just fucking crushing it. <laughs> it's still around. So what does this say? 1,954 miles. I mean, that's... It's not small. Yeah. So, like, that would be like building the Great Wall of China. Yeah, but it's like... We could have just not sent all that money to Ukraine. And now... And well, now, I mean, we, we could just not be in, like, five wars and get that right. done. Right. We, we could also have not printed $7 trillion. <laughs> you know, I didn't get any of that money. That was, like... It, who the where the fuck did all that money go? We don't know. I mean, they built I ninety five, and it's just a couple miles shorter. Dude, just turn that thing up. <laughs> there you go. You got a wall. <laughs> it's pretty good. But you know what? They had a great military case for building the interstate system back in the fifties. What's that? Well, it was uh, it was basically they saw the efficiency and the way that they built the autobahn in Germany, and they took the principles of the autobahn. They then they sold it to the. I guess Congress is a way to not only effectively create an interstate highway system, but also to move troops. And there's a certain way that they built it that every X number of miles, they have a straightaway long enough to turn into runways. And in the case they needed to uh, turn them into like aircraft landing strips. So oh. you know, like you'll see every once in a while, they have a certain distance that gives them the ability to land planes on it basically. Yeah, it's super. Huh. It, but it was it was all after right after World War II, and they spent a ton of money to do it. You know, they we used to have this national unity enough in this country to do things that required a tremendous amount of effort, public works projects, and now it's like our government spending more money than ever, and it's seen. And I think a lot of people are really frustrated. The immigration things, one of them. The health care crisis is another one. Social issues are huge. Social issues are huge, but, like, the government is just spending money in ways that don't make sense to the common person. If you ask the common person, where do our tax dollars go? We've got great nuclear weapons. We've got aircraft carriers out the wazoo. We've got next generation stealth fighters and no the average person. No see your sky, that's for sure. Huh? See your sky, nobody comes oh, close. We're great. But we're fighting wars all over the world. I think the reason a lot of people are upset by the wars in Afghanistan, the wars in Iraq, this war that we're funding in Ukraine, it's like it doesn't make people feel much safer. It doesn't. Right. The perception of safety just, you know, like basically a couple Saudis and Egyptians and Lebanese folks jumped on a plane with box cutters and a well-executed plan and turned us into this military industrial state that we haven't seen since like World War II. The average person, think about this. You live in Miami right now? Mm -hmm. You okay sending your kid to a public school down here? No. I mean, you grew up here. Yeah. Would you? How is that acceptable? We live in the most prosperous fucking city in this country. It is crazy. And I had to, I'm grappling with the same question all the time cuz like we want to have a kid. I know that I'm not going to be comfortable sending them to a public school. You go to other cities, little cities all around this country, and public schools are great. You know, when I looked at my property tax bill and saw how much of it was going to public schools, and I was like, how are they so bad then? And teachers don't get paid much. Like, all that money, where is it going? We spent a trillion dollars a year on defense, and we're running a $2 billion a day federal deficit? For what? It's crazy. The that fact that we have to ask that question yeah. begs an even bigger question. Wait, say that again? The fact that we're asking you the question me. of where the fuck is all that money oh, going yeah. to? There should be some transparency there that, we have no that idea. you don't have to be like a, a professor to research and find out. Yeah. No, but literally nobody knows. You don't like well, the, you don't know where that trillion dollars is going, part how, of the Pentagon's budget. How, how much did the Pentagon um, just um, lose this year? Oh. Oops, don't know where that went. No idea. But it wasn't it's, it wasn't it's, something insane. It's a comical number. It was like it was like it wasn't it like seven it was something insane. How much did the Pentagon uh, 
movie. They fa- they've never they, ever... like, they, they couldn't they couldn't show where, what they used it for. Right, because they've never passed an audit. One point nine trillion unaccounted for. They've never no, passed 3. an audit. Three point eight trillion. And they won't answer where the UFOs are. Like let's you know what? Oh no, they weren't. We spend a trillion dollars a year on let's throw us a bone. Tell us tell us about the UFOs. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know that a Democratic senator, Chuck Schumer, just tried to attach the UAP disclosure some UAP disclosure act with one of the most recent budgets or uh, Pentagon spending bills and it got killed. People really? just shot yeah, it was it was it was in the news. Caesar, if you pull that up. What is it? Chuck Schumer's UAP disclosure bill. And this is this is a guy that huh. Schumer, S C H U M E R. Yeah, there you go. Oh, this is the guy who wants to freaking take our zins away. Is he? Yeah. Fuck this guy. Yeah, this I mean, at least he... Well, that's a different story. At least he was trying to get some news out. Uh, UAP disclosure. Type that in next to him. That's why it got shut down, dude. Everyone was like... Damn, maybe... Nah, maybe, this guy's maybe... gonna sneak his little zin bill in there with the the UAPs. It was, Yeah, I don't think it passed. But, like... Again, I'm a, I'm a big nuance guy, right? So if we're gonna start talking left versus right, yeah, it just it goes over my head because this is not a left right thing. This is a all of them thing. They're all like the fact that they can polarize the public over these like little things and nobody's talking about the big, big, big problems. Do you think that gives almost more credence to caring about the social issues? Like if we're getting boned either way. Right, left, right, they're all getting paid off by all sorts of, it's like whatever, you got right wing big pharma and left wing big pharma and it's basically all the same kind of companies contributing to everything. It's like, then is the only way to dif- differentiate your vote social issues? Yeah, it's just those social issues are, I mean, I hate to say it, but a lot of it's fringe stuff. Yeah, no, it's it like totally it's, is. It doesn't like, what would impact me is like the quality of our schools and like mm-hmm. I would love to know that teachers are being paid more. I would love that when I fly... That's one thing Canada does, right? Teachers make good money in Canada. That's great. Like, you you can make 100 grand plus a year, like, just... Not you can, most of them do, after a a certain number of years. You and I pay property taxes here in the city of Miami. You probably aren't too happy about paying them, but... No. RIP, but... My point (laughs) is, I would love to know that when I fly into Miami International Airport, that the airport works. I don't... I don't like flying into... I think that that airport is is an embarrassment. It's such an embarrassment, actually, that the state of Florida has been really? threatening to take it over. Why? Uh, what's so bad about it? Well, I, like, again, I, don't, I feel like I I haven't had a terrible experience there, so... There's basically two good terminals. Like, all right, give you context. You've flown into a bunch of international airports all around. Yeah. Did you fly into Dubai and think it was an embarrassment of an airport? No, pretty pretty swanky. Pretty swanky. Now I just <laughs> I just did like a whole world thing and I flew all around the world, and, you know, and I love to travel and all that. I have never seen an air a city with the importance of Miami have an embarrassing airport because it's your first. It's like you fly in here, mm-hmm. and it's like it's like a disgrace, like. Half the terminals are you speaking aren't... most mostly because of the appearance of it, or because well, of how half, it functions? Both. Half the terminals haven't been renovated since like the '60s. Like, you, like if you fly in here and like your first impression is that airport, like quite frankly, it's just an embarrassment. Yeah. You know, ha- like is that, I flew. Is in that the... music affecting the uh, audio? If so, just do this. We okay? Okay. Um, what were you saying? Yeah, like. I flew in here, you know, we came back from a trip a couple weeks ago, and, like, it took us an hour and a half to get our bags. Ugh. Like, and they they take two, they took two concourses, they put them into one little baggage claim area, we waited an hour and a half. Like, again, this is, like, these are individual problems, but the bigger thing with with countries that are succeeding right now, like, Mm -hmm. even countries like the Emirates, or some places in Europe is like they are inv- at least investing they're taking their tax dollars and they're investing in the people mm-hmm. good schools good infrastructure good airports like the quality of life is rising and like the quality of life here is actually great mm-hmm. like, but you could see where like the dollars should be going and I don't think that they are and I think a lot of people feel that especially when it comes to our healthcare system and our public schools and you know, public mm-hmm. transportation. 
we don't have public transportation in Miami, a city that's super congested. Like, Big Caesar here can't get to the to the podcast without hitting uh, stupid traffic. Like, yeah. these are all little things, right? That just that creates friction in your life, and I think decreases the average person's quality of life. That you know, if we're thinking about you make a certain amount of money every month, I make a certain amount. Everybody makes a certain amount of money every month. The government kind of does what they want, but where they spend that money, I think is is hugely important and we really just don't have much control over what they do Mm -hmm. you know you get these people that are running our government and it's like they just they do what they want for 30 years and i i don't necessarily think that our quality of life is poor but i could see how in 20 years we're going to be maybe behind the eight ball for sure i mean i think a lot of people you know, we've been fortunate to not be, to not feel it so much, but anybody who's sort of living paycheck to paycheck or month month to month, like they've for sure felt some quality of life uh, decline, you know? And here it's not as bad as say Canada, like in Canada, it's, it's like really a noticeable thing for a lot of people in Canada. Buying a house, like impossible, is like right? totally unaffordable you know just because people like I, i've told you before you know interest rates are whatever eight percent or whatever and then you have to you have to qualify for a two percent stress test you hit that yeah yeah a two percent stress Jeez. test so no, the ac no i got it thank you so that means you need to qualify for a 10 percent interest That's rate crazy. mortgage and um my aunt recently just had uh, an issue where she they were able to show that they had the uh, the finances to buy this the house in cash and the bank wouldn't even what why give them a mortgage i can't remember what the uh what the hang up was but she had to eventually like she had to speak to like a number of people and go to, to a higher and higher up person until they finally allowed them to um but I, I can't remember what the reason was i'll have to ask my mom and get back to you and re- report it on another pod but just it, it's just gone crazy there, you know. The price of food's insane. Gas is crazy. But that's you know. a, that's They're, again, and the city's want... spending now twelve million dollars to change all of the street signs on Dundas. It's like one of the longest streets we have, and you know they determined for some re- some social reason that the the name Dundas had links to something that was problematic for some fringe group, and now. 12 million of taxpayers' dollars are going to change the street signs. Crazy. The inflation thing is is really insidious because it's it's not easily... It's not, like, uh, so easy to track, but when you really mm-hmm. start to pay attention to it, your paycheck doesn't go as far, and when mm-hmm. you're not making any more, much more money... I mean, obviously, people's wages go up over time. It's kind of how things work normally, but, you know, I don't really know what... The cause of what is this? What it? Uh, amid the protests following the murder of George Floyd in 2020, over 10,000 people signed a petition calling for 10,000 so small uh, city to rename Dundas Street due to Henry Dundas's gradual. So he was pro abolition, but in so- gradual abolition as opposed to immediate abolition. So like when everybody was like slavery's bad, he was like. Uh, I want to see how this plays out, and then eventually it was like, all right, it's bad. Is that the basically what happened? Saying gradual, like maybe they phase it out over time or something. Dude, who cares? <laughs> it's like, I don't give a shit. Are you joking? Dude, like, is anyone? I, I've lived. I lived in Toronto my entire life. Never did I look at Dundas and go. Hey, I wonder what uh, where that name Dundas what comes was from. His stance on abolition. And, and even if you did trace it back to this. Are people just walking down Dundas Street every day going, Yeah, gradual abolitionist. I'm an immediate (laughs) abolitionist. How dare you? Like, you remind me of those days I wasn't around for. Oh, my God. What are you talking about? People, 12 million. My butt, our friend and our esteemed most recent guest of the podcast, Mr. Nathan Hill, said he was (laughs) driving through Texas today. And he said he he was like driving past. He said there was like a whole (laughs) convoy of people going down to defend the border. First of all, people are on it. 
Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. There's people doing that already. I think the state of Texas has got that one covered. Yeah. But don't you have a job? If you have time to take a caravan, like with painted signs and little You, you said there were like... Uh, uh, what are those called? Motorhomes. Motorhomes that were wrapped like entirely with the American flag. Don't you have a job or a hobby or like go to the gym or like, you know, don't you have a walk to go? Where's your wife? Is she okay this? I find that there's so many people that have so much time on their hands. They get wrapped up in renaming Dundas Street or taking their family on a caravan trip to defend the border just just to feel like they're part of something. The, the problem with people with just like if you let yourself get sucked in by politics it really can consume you and i think these people have gotten sucked so far into it that they're they believe in their heart that going driving their in this caravan down to defend the border whatever that means is more important than going to their job i really think these guys are like this is my duty as an american or like have you tried getting some sleep maybe <laughs> yeah. some sunlight I f- turn have you turn off Fox News? Dude. Yeah, like <laughs> I feel like so many people's problems could be solved. A convoy of protesters who refer to themselves oh. as God's Army rolled through oh. our area this evening. That's never good. That sounds like a uh, oh look, Bucky's <laughs> God's Army. That sounds like uh, what was the thing they did back in like the 1100s where they took. Jerusalem back, uh, Crusades. Crusades. Okay, <laughs> got it. All right. I just want to make sure I understood that one correctly. By one, cars piled in at the Bucky's and Loxley. Any sort of big movement in the name of religion. Is, the they're going to, they, they met at the Bucky's. <laughs> we are coming across to support our It's a good meeting spot. Well, we're taking back our border. The is that a Confederate flag, flag on his hat? And the group stopped at almost every flag. big oh. city along the journey to get to I-10. Riders we spoke with say they stopped in Baldwin County for a few different reasons. We've been stopping along the way. We need to uh-huh. refuel. We need to rest up. We need to eat. I mean, you got people joining. You know, we've been having different stops all over the country, and people are joining, and we welcome them. The group will continue to pass that through cities as they go, wild. picking up more people. And after about an oh, hour of carrot. rest and the group grabbing some dinner, you can see behind me the group is heading out as they continue their journey to South Texas. They're scheduled to be there in just a few few days in Loxley Whitney Dude, Lyle, WKRG days, News these people, 5. just to get there a few days so That's yeah so our, our friend Nate was he accidentally he was coming back from East uh, Texas Working. and Working. he not he wasn't part of this but he pulled onto the highway and happened to be in the middle of it <laughs> so he was like in a convoy <laughs> To go defend the border. He said he was egging them on, too. He was, like, honking his horn, pretending he was part of it. <laughs> Here's American flag tied on. Yeah. Also, if you guys didn't watch the last episode of the show, well, maybe it was two episodes. Two ago, yeah. Two ago. Turn the video on. <laughs> that's all I'll say about that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good uh, good one to watch. Yeah. I. I this is just it's the same old story time and time again. It's just, like, people that probably don't have enough to do. They get they get caught up in doing other things. It's like they're going on side quests from their life when really they need to pay more attention to their life. <laughs> Great mask, by the way. I would be terrified if I met that person. They had a long sword. They had a long sword. Wait, these are the people that went. Or these are <laughs> oh that's that's a crusader. The, uh, oh. He would wear shillings because he had leprosy when he was. Younger. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, so he was just ugly. Oh, he's fucked up. Under that. On the in the Crusades. Really? Dude, just they a horrible looking man. They had pretty sick uh Masks. like swag back then. Yeah, and the crusades. Just a mat- All right, you know what? Let me let's paint a picture and we can kind of close on this horrible note that I'm about to make here. <laughs> Imagine any time in human history before let's say like 2001. <laughs> people just sweat. And they wore heavy stuff. So like imagine you were a guy living anywhere prior to like 2001 and just nobody used baby powder deodorant oh, wasn't no. that big but like everybody imagine in like the, the i don't know 1600s and you were just walking around in the summer in like florence italy like the renaissance and everybody's all enlightened and shit but really everybody just smelled horrible men women i mean you walk down the street now and you you meet somebody without deodorant and it's like you might as well just just I don't know, stuff your fucking nose with, like, air fresheners. It's disgusting. I was going to say something. Especially worse, in but... this heat. 
anywhere. Just everybody just smelled like shit for all of human history. And we're meant to look back on that time like, oh, wow, look at them. They were real. I wonder if back then, though, that was just the smell. So nobody like, you know. Yeah, maybe like, maybe it just like was something you, you know when you're in a room with a smell and you like oh, yeah. you walk into someone's house right maybe they've been cooking and you're like ooh there's like a there's a smell in here and then you get used to it. I'm just gonna paint one more picture. Okay. You need a lovely lass on the street. You have no idea. You know you you get down and dirty with this lady and you have no idea when the last time they showered. Same with the guys. Men, I mean, men were out working all day. They probably smelled like shit, didn't they? they There's no have. way they had a good smell. I mean, dude, I, probably nothing but missionary position existed until, like, the invention of soap and deodorant, oh, right? God, I mean... <laughs> you, you had to keep those things, you know? Top and bottom had to be separate. Oh. What, uh, wherever people one are. bath a week. Whoa. Typical American would take one bath what, In what time week. period? In the 1800s? And they'd use the, the whole family would use the same water. Oh, dude, imagine being the last guy. Everyone's just been <laughs> just marinating the soup, in themselves the for a week. They're in a fucking oh. human soup. <laughs> dude, I feel like it, oh. you might be better off just not taking a bath. But, like, now, you know this, right? Mm. Perpetual stew. <laughs> Have you heard of that? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Actually, it's probably, I think there's some really that? good food the comes food. as a result of this all around the world. But imagine now... You know that fact. Now, every time you watch some, like, period piece, every show or movie, yeah. and just I, whenever I watch that stuff, they got these, like, quirky little accents, like, ooh, this is such a special time in history. Like, no, they just all smelled like shit. <laughs> Summer, and that lady yeah, it's not has sexy a, like Game of Thrones. Right. <laughs> I'm just thinking, well, at least they were cold. You know, at least when you're cold, like, you don't, yeah. but, like, you look at anybody that was from, like, I don't know, the 1800s or 1700s, and they made some British timepiece about it, and it's like, yeah, they've got on seven layers of cotton, and it's summer. Oh, and wigs. and Like, you smell. You, <laughs> you're a nasty, stinky person. <laughs> Did people in the olden days smell? Yeah, see? Cleanliness was not considered next to godliness. In fact, a person could spend a lifetime not bathing and be considered Well, here's something saintly. we could be thankful for. Thank goodness we are not alive more than, I mean, basically pre-1900s, because, ugh. Dude. Ugh. Well, I think we honestly land it, like, people like to complain. Every era likes to complain, complain about, you know, their place and time. We got it pretty good. Oh, dude. What, what is that? The, the world's <laughs> the, the world's dirtiest man. I've read this guy's story. He also like smoked cat shit. What? Yeah, he's never bathed. Oh. That's like a dub of cat shit right there on that pipe. <laughs> so <laughs> that weird. Dub. Oh my god. What the hell? Dude, I guess I Dude. guess you I guess you could smoke it. We lived in the perfect era where we got to experience life before like the level of accessibility that there is of technology now. Like, I I have a theory that the reason why people are so anxious now, like, anxiety is so high, is obviously there's something to be said about the fact that, I can't remember what the effect is called, but when you bring attention to something, more people start thinking about it, so then they develop that thing, you know? They say that's part of what has caused anxiety to rise. But do you remember being a, a kid in the 90s, and let's say your mom had to pick you up from somewhere and you had to wait a half an hour. You That was a time to be alone with your thoughts, reflect on good or bad decisions you made, and like, dude, sit, sitting on the ground and looking at stuff and just thinking. Or like, you know, if you got really bored, like, how far can I chuck this rock? Like, you had to entertain yourself and sit there and just think. Now, people are like on their phone so much. It's like even when you're sitting at home before you go to bed, like, even me, like now, I'm on my phone, you know, to the last second. I'm never, I'm, unless I am, am intentionally doing it, I'm not alone with my thoughts. So they never developed that skill to sit there. Like people who were born when cell phones, every kid had a cell phone, they've never had to be alone with their thoughts. They've never had to reflect and be uncomfortable and be like, oh man, that thing I said to Susie in third period was super embarrassing. Like, <laughs> you know, maybe I shouldn't behave that way. Like those are things that they've never had to actually 
do. So when they are alone with their thoughts, they're freaked out because they're being yeah, faced with them. They're this, like, ah, I'm back on my this phone. this super powerful pacifier yeah. at all times. Listen, I, I'm not the one to say good, bad, otherwise, but it is kind of a pacifier, right? Like it's, Oh, 100%. Like, we don't have to sit alone with our thoughts. And we, you know, if we ever get bored, we can now just scroll and entertain ourselves. And, like, I don't know about you, but I've gotten to the point where, like, I can tell, like, nothing I'm seeing on the phone world is really that interesting. Because, like, Except Instagram for memes, they're great. Oh, uh, well, I mean, like, thank God for memes. <laughs> it's like laughing with friends over memes, nothing yeah. better. But, like, all the rile up stuff on the internet, it's like, eh, this is just, it's like, come on, this sucks. Like, I know. Like, it's tough, man, because it, like, it points you there. You start watching something, like, completely benign, and then the next thing you know, you're watching something political, or, like, the news creeps its way into all that stuff. Well, not for you. Well, we, you're it, banned. my Canadian phone can't get news sources unless they're government approved. God, welcome to the brain. On social world. media. Yeah. I'm just I'm trying to follow more dogs. Constantly. Dog pages are great. I follow silly. so many like random giant schnauzers now. It's f- hilarious. Really? These people must be like, who the fuck is this guy? Dude, Valentina's uh explore page is so wholesome. So I try to just watch and then scroll like when she sends me something, I'll watch and then scroll, you know, through oh, yeah. that to try to make mine more wholesome. But it's all like Silly couple duos that do oh like dances or prank each other or like that kind of stuff and like that's nice. Yeah, it's words nice... from Nev. <laughs> Story in the comments. What? Even though the what is being said is completely foul, it's not an attack on a person. Oh, or no. Like so, in a way, it's still kind of wholesome. Like yeah. that is a it, the things that are gross. Like it's definitely not. <laughs> Something a child should read because they're going to be looking up a lot of terms. One of them said, infect this chinchilla with AIDS. And mail it, <laughs> and mail to, it me. to me. Like, yeah, that's bizarre. <laughs> Thanks for that That's stuff. super bizarre, but it's not making anyone angry. It's not yeah. putting someone down. It's not political. It's just good old fashioned, gross, basically slapstick humor. I Thank appreciate you, that. And we appreciate you, Tim. Thanks for coming on the show today. All right, guys. Yeah, that's going to be it. That was another fun slash strange one (laughs) (laughs) hope you enjoyed we'll catch you in the next episode see you homies